are blessed. Welcome back to Pray, Read, Pray, where we pray, read God's word together, and pray again. Today is day 129 of the 365 Bible reading plan. Today we'll be reading 2 Samuel 8 and 9 and 1 Chronicles 18. So without further ado, let us go before the throne of God. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you honor, glory, and praise on today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for being alive. We thank you for our health. Lord, we thank you for the will and desire to be before you and get to learn who you are, Lord God. We thank you for allowing us to commune with you, Lord God. Please uh, broaden our understanding, Lord God. Help us to uh, mentally and physically understand um, you as our creator, you as our father, help us to be able to apply your word and help us to be able to share it to whomever is willing to listen, Lord God. And we thank you for each and every opportunity you have given us to spread the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Second Samuel chapter 8. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation, by the way. I don't want to ever neglect to say that because if you're like me, you want to read the exact translation as the person. Chapter 8. After this, David defeated and subdued the Philistines by conquering Gath, their largest town. David also conquered the land of Moab. He made the people lie down on the ground in a row and he measured them off in groups with a length of rope. He measured off two groups to be executed for every one group to be spared. The Moabites who were spared became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. David also destroyed the forces of Hadazir, 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 son of Rehob, king of Zobah, when Hadazir marched out to strengthen his control troll along the Euphrat River, David captured 1,000 chariots, 7,000 charioteers, and 20,000 foot soldiers. He crippled all the chariot horses except enough for 100 chariots. When Aramans from Damascus arrived to help King Hadazir, David killed 22,000 of them. Then he placed several army garrisons in Damascus. The Aramim capital and the Aramans became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. So the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. David brought the gold shields of Hadazir's officers to Jerusalem along with a large amount of bronze from Hadazir's towns of Teba and Berathai. When King Toy of Hamath heard that David had destroyed the entire army of Hadazir, he sent his son Joram to congratulate King David for his success campaign. Hadazir and Toa had been enemies and were often at war. Joram presented David with many gifts of silver, gold, and bronze. King David dedicated all these gifts to the Lord, as he did with the silver and gold from the other nations he had defeated, from Edom, Moab, Ammon, Phil Philistia, and Amalek, and from Hadazir, son of Rehob, king of Zobah. So David became even more famous when he returned from destroying 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He placed army garrisons throughout Edom and all the Edomites became David's subjects. In fact, the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel and did what was just and right for all his people. Joab, son of Jeruah, was commander of the army. Jehoshaphat son of Ahilud, was the royal historian. Zadok, son of Ahidu, and Ahimelech, son of Abathar, were the priests. Sariah was the court secretary. Benaiah, son of Jehoshada, was captain of king's bodyguard. And David's son served as priestly leaders. So David had favor of God, like God loved him. He obviously loved God and he was very faithful and very submissive to the Lord's authority. He would ask questions about fighting, going to war, about peace, about his military, his armies. Like He had a very, very close relationship with God and he was really verbal to him. And that's what God wants. He wants us to commune with him, right? 
And so David had victory over all his enemies. And this was an ongoing, continuous thing. Um, and as you can see, the numbers were ridiculously large. Like we're not talking about like, hey, he ruled over four or five people. He was able to conquer thousands of people, whether on foot or in a chariot or whatever, through God's means, his uh, um, strength and his control, because obviously he's ultimately in control. But yeah, so very successful military person, right? All right, so let's go into verse nine. Hopefully I won't butcher too many more names. Excuse me, chapter nine. One day David asked, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? He summoned a man named Ziba who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba? The king asked. Yes, sir, I am. Ziba replied, the king then asked him, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba replied, yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both leg, both feet. I'm sorry. Where is he? The king asked. In Lodibur, Ziba told him, at the home of Makur, son of Amiel. So David sent for him and brought him from Makur's house. His name was Mephis. Mephibosheth, excuse me, y'all. I'm trying to get this. Mephibosheth, he was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. David said, Greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth. Ugh, that's a that's that's a different one. Rep <laughs> replied, "I am your servant. Don't be afraid." David said, "I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table." Mephibosheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and servants are to farm the land for his for him to reduce food for your master's household. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, will eat here at my table. Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Ziba replied, yes, my lord, the king, I am your servant and I will do all that you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly at David's table like one of the king's own son. Mephibosheth had a young son named Mecca. From then on, all the members of Ziba's household were Mephibosheth's servants. And Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem and ate regularly at the king's table. So he showed kindness to Saul's relative for the sake of Jonathan. Him and Jonathan obviously had a brotherly love. They was down for each other. Um, they had each other's backs. They was very faithful and very loyal to one another. And so he felt it was only right that he do such as he's doing now with his family member. All right. So now we have First Chronicles 18. Where I met... Almost. I get where I need to be. Well, this was already marked on it. Good. All right. First Chronicles 18. After this, David called, David defeated the subdued. Excuse me. After this, David defeated and subdued the Philistines by conquering Gath and its surrounding towns. David also conquered the land of Moab and the Moabites, who were spared became David's subject and paid him tribute money. David also destroyed the forces of Hadazer, king of Zobah, as far as Hamath. When Hadazer marched out to strengthen his control along the Ephraim River, David captured 1,000 chariots, 7,000 charioteers, and 20,000 foot soldiers. He crippled all the chariot horses except enough for 100 chariots. When 
Aramans from um, Damascus arrived to help King Hadadezer. Oh, Hadadezer. David killed 20,000 of them. Then he placed several army garrisons in Damascus and Araman capital. And the Aramans became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. So the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. David brought the gold shields of Hadassir officers in Jerusalem, along with a large amount of bronze from Hadassir's town of Teba and Kun. Later, Solomon melted the bronze and molded it into great bronze bastions called the sea, the pillars, and the various bronze articles used at the temple. When King Toy of Hamath heard that David had destroyed the entire army of King Hadassir of Zobah, he sent his son Joram to congratulate King David for his success. Campaign, campaign. Hadassir and Toy had been enemies and were often at war. Joram presented David with many gifts of gold, silver, and bronze. King David dedicated all these gifts to the Lord, along with the silver and gold he had taken from the other nations, from Edom, Moab, Ammon, Philistia, and Amalek. Abishai, son of Zerua, destroyed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He placed army garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's subject. In fact, the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel and did what was just and right for all his people. Joab, son of Jeruah, was the commander of the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilu, was the royal historian. Zadok, son of Ahidub, and Ahimelech, son of Abetha, were the priests. Syria was the court secretary. Benaiah, son of Jehoda, was captain of the king's bodyguard. And David's son served as the king's chief assistant. All right, so once again, repetitious, repeated texts from earlier in 2 Samuel. Um, David was victorious. God led, led and guided him and kept him. Um, he obviously had a mindset to please God to do what he say because he often consulted with God before he made any decisions regarding war and whatever. And he was always victorious because God was on his side and he was obviously good in character. So he didn't manipulate anything or take advantage of no situation. He simply was an obedient servant of God. And that proved to be very profitable for him and the surrounding Israelites. All right, y'all. So that concludes the reading for today. Stay tuned for day 130, where we'll be reading Psalms 50, 53, 60, and 75. Thank you so much. May the Lord keep and guide you. May he continue to strengthen it and grow your knowledge and understanding in his word. Lord, may he continue to give you self-control and obedience, Lord God, that you, that we may do your will, your way, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you all. God bless. Take care. Bye.